Look in there. That is absolutely sensational. That is a real Yorkshire curd tart. Look at that. Hi everyone, welcome to Backyard Chef. I'm Rick today. I'm doing a classic from Yorkshire. I'm making Yorkshire curd tart. Fantastic recipe and this starts with making some curd. We're going to make our own curd in the reduced section of the supermarket. A couple of cartons of milk. Obviously people don't buy them, they're too big to go in the fridge. Perfect for this. A couple of cartons of milk and some cloth. Vinegar or a lemon for curdling. That is up to you. You can use white vinegar. I always use apple cider vinegar. I get fantastic results and I don't get any flavour in there at all. So this is a very straightforward recipe to start off with. So all we're going to do is go in this pan with our milk. So we just tip that in there. So it's as easy as that. Now the curd can be made into cottage cheese, paneer cheese, Yorkshire curd tart. The, the list is endless actually, you know. And depending where you are in the world, some of the ingredients are very expensive to buy. But when you can get hold of this reduced stock, perfect. And then all we do is we put a flame on. Now what you have to do with your milk is you have to keep giving it a stir. Common sense, milk, flame, it will catch on the bottom of the pan inside. So you just have to keep giving it a stir. The early stages like this, you don't have to stir it so often. When it starts to bubble over the top, then you have to keep an eye. Keep an eye and just stir it round. Make sure it doesn't catch on the bottom of the pan. After all, we don't want burnt milk. So that's it, we're just gonna bring it to the boil. And then when it gets to the boil, I'll be tipping vinegar in, but you can squeeze in lemon juice, anything like that, curdle the milk. So let's just wait until we curdle it. Okay, as you can see, this is starting to come up to the boil now. Look, we got all this fluff and everything coming up here. We have to watch the temperature. We don't want to turn it off because it has to be boiling. And then we're just going to go in there with two or three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Now you can use lemon like I say, that's up to you. And then we're just going to give it a stir. And we'll just leave it boiling just a little second. Till the curds. We turn the heat down, but leave it on a little bit. Now this is my way, you can do it any way, you can turn it off once you've got that. But I just let it have another 10 seconds or so, with a little bit of heat under it. I've always done it that way, so I won't change, and I've never had a problem. I always get lovely curd. I just think it helps with the uh, vinegar in the water in the whey and if there's any more curd to be formed it will form with the heat and the vinegar. So as you can see it's got a little bit on there look and then I turn it off. That is it. That is our curds and whey. Now just leave it a minute or so, a couple of minutes before we actually strain it. It gives it all time to make as many curds as possible. And that looks tremendous. Look at that in there. Good quality curds or cottage cheese and then liquidize it up. You have cream cheese. Right now what you need to do is take yourself a cloth. This is 100% cotton cloth. I don't know what they call it around the world and I get so many people saying how big is it, what is it made of, look, it's 100% cotton, it's a cotton cloth. 
that's it. Now I've just wet this cloth, just makes it a little bit easier. Now, the cloth size does not matter, okay? It depends on the job that you're doing. If you've only got a small bit of something, you only need a small cloth, it's common sense. Okay, in here I have a sieve, a sieve thing, and I've got a bowl. I'm just gonna put that in there and I'm just gonna put my cloth over there. And we'll swap it round, look. And we'll just put that there a second. And then it really is no more hard. I've got a couple of sieves, one's got bigger holes in and this has got a small one for the end. And then it is not any more hard to do than to take that from there and put in there. And that is it, that is our cottage cheese right there, which can be cubed up, could be squashed up and drained out and made into paneer. And this is all from a five litre reduced carton of milk. You really hate the waste of product, you know? Especially when you've got something like this. There's an awful lot of tubs of cottage cheese there for very little money. So that is our curds there, that's our cottage cheese. That's as easy as that. And the way our greeny water can be used in baking and all sorts of things. It's absolutely fantastic tipped on the garden. There's a lot of stuff in there, a lot of nutrients and things, which actually help things grow around our place. So that is our curds, our cottage cheese right there. That is delicious. Really, really good. Now, all it's doing is draining to help it along its way, if you wanted to, you could take your cloth, you can bring up your cloth sides, like that, and you can see it draining out there. You could take some string, and you could hang it, and you could hang it till it all drips out. And it will drain eventually, now, if you don't squash it, you will have a nice crumbly curd. If you squash it or put a weight on it, you're going to get a solid mass like paneer cheese. And there is a link on the channel for paneer cheese if you want to see how to make it. But it's the same as this, but squashed in a mould. <laughs> so there you have it. There is our curd. So what I've done, I've got our curd in there, look, and I've just put a little cover over the top. Um, and we're just going to leave it there whilst we make the pastry. Now, you've seen me make pastry a hundred times on this channel. So if you want to look for an in-depth how to make the pastry, there is a link and I'll put it in the description. I'm just going to get straight on and get it made up, okay? I've got my fats in here and I've got my flour in here. I've got a little bit of salt in here. And when I just mix this through very quickly, I'm then going to add a tablespoon of sugar. That's all because this is a sweet short crust pastry. So we don't, you know, we've got to put it in there. So it's nice and steady. Just bring it together like we normally do. Okay, you can do the old finger and thumb, but then give it a little rub and lift it up. Let's not get hung up on making pastry. It's very easy, very quick. Okay, light hands, lift, rub, drop. Okay, so that's straightforward enough. And then I'm just gonna go in there with a tablespoon of sugar. That's going to make this into a nice, sweet, short crust pastry. But it's not gonna be overly sweet, obviously, because it's only one tablespoon of sugar. I'm just gonna go in there with our wet mixture and we're gonna bring it together. 
Just bring it together nice and steady. Hand in and just bring it in nice and gently. There we are, just five minutes of work. That's done. And we are, I'm just going to give my hands a rinse and then we are going to roll it out. It's not going in the fridge. If you want to put pastry in the fridge, please do so. We need to crack on. Okay, we're not going to hang around with this. I'm going to get this oven. We're going to preheat 170 ish, somewhere around about there. I'll preheat the oven 170 degrees. You preheat your oven at home 180. Even up to 200 if you so wish, we're going to blind bake our pastry when we roll it out. Now I'm using a nine inch, nine inch loose bottom tin and I've lined it. I want some flour on there. And we want some pastry. Now we haven't rested this or anything as you've seen. Let's have it rolled out. That should fit that look. That's nice and steady. We just want to put that in there. And then nice and steady, just squash it all the way down to the bottom. Get it right in there. So that's no hassle, look. That's nice and straightforward. Now normally I just blind bake and then cut off because this is going to shrink. Now everybody has their own way and there'll be a lot of comments on here about how to trim off and then blind bake it makes a neater job and everything else look everybody bakes their own way if i'm doing a hundred hundred tarts i will run the rolling pin straight over the pastry or just run it straight over and whip it off when i'm only doing one tart and i want to keep the tart quite high i blind bake like this everybody to their own and then I'll trim off afterwards. Just prick this all over on the bottom. Stop it from rising up. That'll do. And then screw up some parchment paper and stuff it in. Now these are loaf liners but that doesn't matter. For loaf cakes that doesn't matter. It's all I have so that's what I'm using. You need to put in rice or baking beads anything that you're using I'm using baking beads. I prefer beads to rice, but we'll use rice, not a problem. And then we just up to the sides, and that's going to stop the sides from collapsing in a little bit. We're going to take that, that's going on a tray, we're on a tray, that's going in the oven, we're going to blind bake for 15 minutes. Okay, we've got end hot there, look. We want to be taking that out of there and we need to be taking those baking beads out. Now before I take that out we're using eggs in the recipe so I'm just going to give these a little beating because we actually want to egg wash the bottom of this tart case and it's going to give it a seal. Get those beads out of there. So all we do is egg wash our tart casing and then that goes back in. Okay, that goes back in the oven and it only goes in for five minutes. Okay, it's not three minutes, that'll do. There we go. Nicely sealed.
So that's our curd in there. We're just going to add our egg. Our egg mixture is going in there. So we just want to be going in there with a couple of tablespoons of sugar. Now we don't want to be going too much because I don't want this Yorkshire curd too sweet. I don't want it like a sweet custard. And what is optional is cream. It doesn't have to go in. I'm just going to add about a quarter of a cup of cream and we're going to give it a beat in with a beater. So I've shown you all how to zest before on the channel. Everybody zests upside down. You can't see what you're zesting off. You zest it over the top. You know, it, it collects in there. So you come over the top and you have your zest without any white pith at all. You can see exactly what you're doing. So we just want a zest of a lemon in there. Give it that lovely little bit of a citrusy um, taste through our curd tart. There we go. All we're going to do now is just give that a beating up. Loosen it all up in there and make it a little bit creamy. Now we've got some good curds. It's not a smooth curd. So as it smooths up, we still want to, I'm going to want to keep some of that texture in there. I want that bite in there. Just give it a mix in. Bring all that in there. This is going to be a lush Yorkshire curd tart. Right, we want to be going in there with some of our fruit. Just bob some fruit in, it doesn't matter. You put in what you want. Some of this is going to sink through and we'll bob some on the top when we put this mix in there. Nice little stir in there, look. So this is easy baking, really. We're not going to make a big drama out of it, look. Nice and steady. We'll probably do a bit more fruit. You know, you can put in whatever you want. <laughs> that looks tremendous. That really does look like a good thick curd. Right, our tarts here. And as you know, I do things backwards way around. My preference, off the top of there with that. It's entirely up to you how you do this, like I say, this is my way. Okay, so all we've got to do now is just get our curd in there. Push it down to the end there like that. We are going on there with a few more of those. Little pinch of nutmeg over the top. Okay, the oven's preheated there, look, it's preheated 175. Now I've got this raised up and what I'm hoping is gonna stay raised up so we get a nice bit on there. Now normally you would make it flat, but this is not a runny Yorkshire curd. This is already up and raised, it's quite thick. I'm hoping it's going to set over there and give us a deep curd on top. Okay, so we're just going to shove that in there for 15 minutes and see what happens. This is looking absolutely tremendous. Really, really good. All cooked in the high sapienti air fryer too. Cooked in an oven exactly the same. It's going to raise up. This looks absolutely incredible. It really does look incredible. Now that is in hot, we're going to take that out and we'll see what it looks like. I would say that that looks like a bit of a masterpiece. I will honestly say, hand on heart, that has turned out better than I thought it would do. I thought it would level off a lot more than that. It's firmed up quite nicely. It's a little bit firm there, a little bit soft there. It could sink in the middle a little bit, so I won't prod it. I'm going to leave it. So we're going to give that about 10 minutes to cool down. Probably longer, actually. It wants to be cool. And then we'll cut a slice. 
We need to be dropping that off there. It needs to come off there. It's still a bit warm actually. We need to be putting that on there and look at that. Look at that. Well, that is my interpretation of a Yorkshire tart. What we need to do now is give it a taste test. Look at that. Just look at that. That is my style of Yorkshire tart. We need to cut some. So let's just come in here. Oh, lovely, crispy pastry. Look in there. That is absolutely sensational. That is a real Yorkshire curd tart. Look at that. Oh, here we go. Proper Yorkshire curd tart. Look at that. Oh, crumbly curd. Oh, you've got that lemon zest through there. That is absolutely wonderful. That is wonderful. That is what it's like to make with fresh curd. You know, you don't have to mix it all up like a custard. We want to get the benefit of the curd through there. That is sensational. That is one Yorkshire curd tart made. Well, not like the rest of them with custard or like a custard mix. This is using the fresh curd. This is absolutely next level. Really fresh and light. It's delicious. It really is. If you like what we're doing, don't forget, smash that like and subscribe, share with your friends, all that kind of stuff. Catch you in the next video.